Okay, welcome back. We are on part five, chapter 11, part five. Talking about conventional loans. So at some point in time, you may have some kind of loan you need to do in your lifetime. Um, we live in America, and that's just kind of seems like the American way, sadly. Uh, however, we need to know a bit about how these things work. So we're starting off with a homeowner's mortgage. A mortgage is a long-term loan in which property is pledged as security for repayment of the difference between the down payment and the sale price. So basically, if you buy a $200,000 house and uh, the, the, you promise to pay the bank back and maybe they charge you in a certain amount uh, per month on your payment, if you default, if you're unable to pay the monthly balance, maybe it's $1,500, the bank will take back the house. So that's kind of how it works. Uh, we have adjustable rate loans, ARMS they're called, also called a variable rate loan, means the interest rate can change every period as specified by the loan. Uh, personally, I don't think that's as good because you never quite know what the market's going to do. Specifically right now, the market's kind of wild. It's up in the 8.5 to 9%. Uh, conventional loan, on the other hand, means the interest rate is fixed for the duration of the loan. This is the type of loan my wife and I have in our home. Uh, we got in when it was pretty low, and I believe we're fixed at 2.85, which is actually pretty good. So we talk about homeowner's mortgage and what needs to happen in that mortgage. We start with a down payment. This depends on how old the property is and who's lending the money and the whether or not it's going to be easy to borrow money at the time. I think this is the wrong word, weather. Anyways, uh, the money goes to the seller. And so when we do this kind of a, a piece, that is the wrong weather. Yeah. Yeah. Gotcha. Again, math teacher, not English teacher. Uh, most lending institutions require the buyer to pay one or more points. So they use the word points for their loan at the time of closing. One point is a percentage of the mortgage amount. So if you're mortgaging two hundred thousand dollars for your home uh if you have to pay one point that would be one percent of two hundred thousand dollars is what you need to bring to the bank the money goes to the lender um and there's obviously other things that are going to be required as well let's take a look at an example example number one the clarks wanted to purchase a house selling for eighty five thousand dollars now i don't know where they're buying an eighty five thousand dollar house it's obvious that this book is a little bit dated uh it's hard to find an eighty five thousand dollar house that you can walk into and start living in Sadly, uh, the bank requires 15% down payment and a payment of one point at the time of closing. So we have to determine the Clark's down payment. We have to write a 15% down payment and determine the Clark's mortgage. And what is the cost of the point paid by the Clark's on their mortgage? Let's start. Down payment, 15% on a house selling for $85,000. We know how to do that. 0.15 times 85,000 gets us a $12,750 down payment. So now we can determine the mortgage. We take 85,000 minus $12,750 and we get 72,250. Notice that their down payment goes directly towards what we call that principal, the actual mortgage amount. So that's kind of the nice thing. You don't really lose anything on percentages there. Then we got to find the cost of one point that was paid by the clerks. Well, they need to finance $72,250. So finding 1% of that would be 0 0.01 times $72,250. And you wind up with $722.50. So that is the one point they have to pay as well. That money goes to the lender for the work that they're doing. Okay. When we talk about adjusted monthly income, um, this is another form of using this style. Uh, banks use a formula to determine the maximum monthly payment that's believed is within the purchaser's ability to pay. What this means is the bank will look at your statements. They will look at how much money you make. They will look at how much uh, you have to spend. You might be making car payments. You might have college loans you got to pay off. You might own a card shark money in Vegas. Hopefully not. Uh, they'll take a look at those bits and pieces and tell you basically what they figure you can afford. So the loan officer has to determine the buyer's adjusted monthly income by subtracting from the gross monthly income any fixed monthly payments with more than 10 months remaining. Like I said, things like car payments or uh, other things like that. The adjusted monthly income is multiplied by 28%. This answers the maximum monthly payment the lender believes the purchaser can afford. They kind of build in. It's not 100% because, you know, they might have things like groceries. You might have other odds and ends and doodads that might show up that they're not sure of. So this payment has to cover the principal, has to cover the interest, has to cover the property taxes, and has to cover the insurance. When you go in to see a mortgage lender, they're going to probably sit down and they're going to ask for your bank statements and ask for your um, anything you have as far as other debts. And they'll use all that information to figure out for you a number that they believe you can afford. 
I would recommend not aiming for buying a house at that number. You're going to want to do something that's a bit lower than that number because you don't want to be stretched so tight that you literally can't afford living anywhere. Okay. Question so far? I'll answer them later. Send me an email. Uh, example number two, the Clarks from example one. Their gross monthly income is $3,200 and they have 15 remaining payments of $185 per month on their car loan. 14 remaining payments of $35 per month on a loan used to purchase a new washer dryer. The taxes on their house they want to purchase are $135 a month and the insurance is $38 per month. Oh my, welcome to adulting. These are the things that you will need to have to deal with as you get older. And unfortunately, if you go to college where you need to take out some loans, you're going to have to throw in some student loans and stuff in there too. So, whoo, Lord willing, everything goes well for you guys. Anyways. Oh, that's so nice of them. Yeah, it's a sliver. But anyways, correct. Do your best to not take loans if you can help it. Uh, letter A here. What maximum monthly payment does the bank's loan officer think the Clarks can afford? And B, the Clarks want a 30-year, $72,250 mortgage. If the interest rate is 8%, determine whether the Clarks qualify for the mortgage. So first we have to figure out how much they can afford. And then we have to figure out whether they can afford this 8% mortgage. All right. You're going to turn yourself into a bank loan officer. I know you may not go into this uh, field, but um, if you are good with numbers and you're good with people, not a bad job because I know a couple bank loan officers and they got better cars than I do. But anyways, uh, what maximum monthly payment does the bank loan officer think the Clarks can afford? So we take our adjusted monthly income, our gross monthly income minus our monthly payments. Okay. So we have a monthly income of $3,200. We subtract our monthly, a gross monthly income, which is 185 and our monthly payments, which is 35, leaving us with about $2,980. So we can calculate the maximum monthly payment based on the adjusted monthly income times 28%. I do not know who came up with 28%, probably some kind of math actuary or genius. So we take that number, 2980, times 0.28, and we get the fact that they could make a monthly payment of about $834.40. Okay. Part B, we want a 30-year mortgage on $72,250, interest rate of eight. Can we qualify for the mortgage? So we're going to use the mortgage chart in the text on page 561 to help us with this. And when we look there, we can see that 8% over 30 years is $7.34 for every $1,000 borrowed. So loan over 1,000 times the interest. We take our loan, $72,250, divided by 1,000 times 7.34. Da, 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 da. Mortgage payment would be $530.32. Sweet, they qualify. Wait a minute, do they? We have to take the mortgage payment plus taxes plus insurance. And so earlier in the equation, we had some tax and some insurance. Taxes were 135, insurance was $83. Sometimes you'll have these called like PMI. Um, I forget what the PMI stands for, but it, it builds in taxes and insurance. Uh, so that total is 703 and da, 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 da. they qualify for the loan. So the bank is okay to loan them this money. If you buy a house using a mortgage payment system, you will go through this process. My wife and I went through this process two times, I think. And it's kind of scary a little bit, but it's kind of exciting when they say, yep, you're good to go for this amount. Now, do not go out there if they say you're approved for, because sometimes you can get pre-approved. You bring in your numbers and they crank them out and they go, okay, you are pre-approved for, let's say, $200,000. That does not mean go out there and find $5,000 borrow from your mom or something and say, hey, can I buy a $205,000 house? There's no benefit to maximizing the amount of house you can get, especially today's market. Anyways, that's just, uh, I digress. It's a side note. All right, moving on to example three. Example three, the Lanes have decided to build a new house. We'll try this method instead. The contractor quoted them a price of $135,700. The taxes on the house will be $3,450 per year. They must live close to Green Bay because that's that's about right. The insurance will be $350 per year. They have applied for a conventional loan from a local bank. The bank is requiring a 25% down payment. Ooh, that's pretty chunky. And the interest rate on the 40-year loan whew, is 9.5%. That is a big that is a big number. That is a big number. The Lane's annual income of $64,000, so we'll see if that all fits. They have more than 10 monthly payments remaining on each of the following. 
$218 on a car payment, $120 on new furniture, and $109 on a camper. I don't know. Just look at these numbers. It's going to be tight. It's going to be a tight squeeze. So we're going to figure this out. First, determine the required down payments. Well, we need 25% of $135,700. So 0 0.25 times 135,700 gets us a down payment. We got to walk in the bank with $33,925. So the next question is how much do we need to finance? Well, remember, we're taking the amount we're asking for, 135,700, and we're subtracting how much we're putting in for a down payment. So we can subtract 33,925. And we are asking the bank to give us $101,775. Next, we go to the loan officer and we got to see, can we make this fit? So our annual income is $64,000. We divide that by 12 to get a monthly income of $5,333.33. Our payments that we have that go out monthly are 218, 120, and 190. Now that does not include insurance. That does not include um, taxes. So we got to still figure that out. Our adjusted monthly income is five thousand three hundred thirty-three and thirty-three cents minus two eighteen minus one ten one twenty minus one ninety gives us we have about four thousand eight hundred and five dollars and thirty-three cents per month to work with. Our maximum monthly payment has to be this amount times 0.28, which means $1,345.49. So that's part one. Part one is figuring out how much can we actually pay per month. And now if you're paying this, you're gonna be living on like jello and water because you're going to be super thin so anyways uh determine the monthly mortgage payments now we're moving to the other half of the equation 9.5 percent interest over 40 years using the chart that's in the book is eight dollars and 11 cents per one thousand dollars so our monthly mortgage is going to be the amount we need which is 101,775 over 1000 times this dollar amount eight dollars and seven eleven cents What's that get us? It gets us a cost of $825.40. Then we have to add a couple things, right? Here's our total monthly payment plus mortgage or plus taxes plus insurance. And our taxes are this much per year. So we divide that out. We get $287.50 per year. Our insurance is $350 per year. So we divide that out per month, $29.17. We add those all up. $825.40 plus our taxes plus our insurance. And we get $1,142.70. They were approved for $1,300.45 and 49 cents. They made it. Yay? Question mark. You're signing yourself up for a 40 year mortgage here, folks. So for the next 40 years, you'll be paying $1,142.07 to the bank for 40 years. That's a lot. However, if it gives you a place to live, that might be in your wheelhouse. So that's part one. Let me jump to part two. Part two has a couple more examples. Let's go to part two. Sorry, this video is going to be a little bit longer. Part two. Back to the Clarks. Maybe part two is just the examples. Does that look like the same? No, it doesn't. Ooh, nice. Okay. So part two. Clarks obtained a house selling for $85,000 and they made a $15 down payment on 30 year uh, mortgage at 8%. They also paid one point. So this is their cost. Determine the total amount the Clarks will pay for their house over 30 years. This is the other half. Like I said, the previous example, you're paying $1,100 a month. How much is that going to be over 40 years? And then what's the house cost or value after that time? Yeah, these are the questions. Sorry not to scare any of you. Don't be scared, my guys. We got this. How much uh, of the cost will be interest? And how much of the first payment on the mortgage is applied to the principal? So these are, again, there are uh, calculators out there that help you, but this will give you an idea of what it is you're calculating. So for example, 1A, determine the total amount the clerks will pay for their house over 30 years. If their monthly payments are $530.32, we take that times 12 to get what it is per year. We take that times 30 to get what it is for payments. They are going to pay $190,915.20. And what does their house, what did their house cost? $85,000. You know what I'm saying? That kind of makes you a little sick, doesn't it? it made me sick first time I saw it, and uh, yet here I am. So your total cost is your mortgage payments plus down payment plus points. So that we take our big, big old fat chonky cost, add that to our down payment. That's what they paid up front plus the points that we had to pay. And here's the real damage. This is the damage. 
So your $85,000 house actually over 30 years will cost you $204,387.70. So in order to have access to that difference, to that $115,000, I'm sorry, to, to have access to that $85,000, you will have to pay the bank $115,000. Ugh, kind of makes me sick. But anyways, just so you're aware, part B, how much of the cost will be interest? So if we take our total interest, which is going to be our total cost minus the purchase price minus points, our total cost was $204,387.70. We take away our purchase price, which is $85,000, and our points, $722.50. This is the interest. The interest alone is $118,665.20. That's just the interest. That's just the thanks bank for lending us some money. And that's why the guy that works at the bank has a nicer car than me. I digress. Part C. Oh, sorry. Yep. So yeah, it's um it's a sad, it's a sad fact as we're living in the US that that's kind of how this works. So just making you guys aware. Uh, example one C, how much of the first payment on the mortgage is applied to the principal? So again, we can use our interest calculation here, PRT. So if we have $72,250, that was our first payment. I'm sorry, that's our principal. Uh, times 0 0.08 times 1 12th. So $481.67 of the $500 plus we're paying is actually going there. Excuse me. So principal paid is a mortgage payment, which is 530 minus the interest, which is 41. So this is why. <laughs> Of our $530, only $48.65 is actually going to knocking down the $72,000 we owe. Are you crying yet inside? I was crying inside the first time I established the understanding of this. <coughs> Do everything in your possible to not have to use mortgages. Unfortunately, it's kind of a sad truth. Okay, everybody good here? Not to depress you on this wonderful day, but let's keep talking. Example two, the Smiths are purchasing a home, selling for $89,900 with a 15% down payment. The period of the mortgage is 30 years and the interest rate is 11.5. Oh my goodness, the Smiths, 11.5. Oh, that's harsh. Determine the amount of the down payment, the monthly mortgage payment, the amount of the first payment applied to the principal, the total cost of the house and the interest paid. Here we go, part one. Down payment, 15% down payment on 89900 That's pretty easy. 0 0.15 times 89900 gets us $13,485. So they walked in with that amount in their pocket, said, here, we'd like to buy a house. Please give us the rest. Part B, determine the monthly mortgage payment. Total interest equals the loan divided by 1000 Again, use that chart to help you with that number times the interest. Loan is $89,900 minus what we came in the bank with, $13,485, leaving us a uh, requested amount of $76,415. We're saying, bank, can you give us $76,415? Using that chart on page 561, we calculate that 11.5% over 30 years is $9.90. So we take the amount we're asking the bank for, $76,415, divided by 1,000, times it by $9.90. This is our monthly mortgage payment. 756.51. Woo. C. The amount of the first payment applied to the principal. Interest uh, is principal times rate times time. So we have our principal, 76,415 times the rate. Remember, the rate is 11.5, so it's 0 0.115 times 1 12th, because that's one of our payments. So here's the amount that we're paying mortgage payment minus the interest. So our mortgage payment is $756.51. We subtract from it the interest, $732.31. Here's time to start crying. Only $24.20 of this payment is actually knocking down your principal. You should see their faces in here, folks. See their faces. Determine the total cost of the house. Total cost, mortgage payments plus the down payments plus the points. One mortgage payment is $756.51. Take that times 12 to get us the number of payments in a year. Take that times 30 to get us the number of payments overall. Again, we're financing for about an $89,000 house. We are paying at the end this in our payments. That doesn't even include the down payment plus the other little odds and ends payment. And so when you add the down payment in there, you're financing, you're going to be paying back $285,828.60 to the bank. 
and you borrowed 89,000 ish. Hmm. 200K bank. Here you go. Something. I mean, that's kind of, that's an idea too. Yeah. There we go. Determine the total interest paid. Total interest paid is going to be the total cost minus the purchasing price minus the points. So we have our interest paid minus the purchase price, 89900 minus the points. We didn't have to pay any points here. Gives us $195,928.60. That is how much we're giving the bank as a, hey, can you help us out to buy this $89,900 house? Now imagine if this house was actually $250,000. Imagine how much interest you would be paying. You could calculate it out. It's going to be probably well over $500,000 of interest. Yes, loans are real. Be careful out there. Be careful out there. All right, that's it for our lesson. Sorry if you're crying. I'm not crying. I already did my crying. See you next time.